God, I'm bored. I'm bored, 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 bored. Ah, I have absolutely no idea why you guys would hire me to take you on a nymphing trip. You don't need a guide to show you how to, any idiot can nymph. You don't need a guide for it. It's like, hey, Hank, you know, should we use a red nymph or a blue nymph or a green, orange, red, rubber legs, bead head? It doesn't matter. It's all the same crap. There you go. Little, little line out on that thing and mend it. Hey, hey, are you listening to me? I'm telling you, your old man down here is wasting his money. Hey, look, you're the one who ought to be pissed, right? Because here he is, he's pissing away your college fund, right? He's pissing away your inheritance on what? On a nymphing fly fishing trip. We ought to be fishing dries. Look at him down there. <sighs> I can't even watch it. Kidding me? God, that's a shit show. Hey, hey. You know the difference between fishing with a nymph and fishing with bait? No. Nothing. It's the same thing. Exact same garbage. It's poor parenting, really. Force your kid to sit out here and fish with a nymph. And hey, look, this is between us, all right? This is what we call inner circle, between you and me. Don't go telling your dad that I said this, all right? Just keep it between us. Don't go blabbing it. But hey, here's the reality. Your dad is a bad fly for me. The man can't fish. He's an even worse role model to you. You like beer? The Real Adventures of Fly Fishing Expert, Hank Patterson. Your Fly Fishing Guide. Hi, I'm Hank Patterson, role model and world-renowned fly fishing expert and guide. Today we're going to be exploring the dark, seedy, murky, cloudy, disgusting, underwater world of fishing with nymphs, also known as nymphing, or getting down and dirty, or as I like to call it, the exact opposite of why we all got into fly fishing in the first place. Now, for those of you that are new to fly fishing, nymphing can best be described as exactly like fishing with worms. Now, that being said, if you go fishing and you want to catch fish, uh, you got to take a pile of nymphs with you. I mean, if one of the objectives to your fishing trip is to catch something, uh, you got to learn how to fish with nymphs. Hey, kid, kid, hey, 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 over here, kid. Hey, what's the deal anyway? Does your, your old man just not know how to fish with dries? Does he, does he just not know how? Huh? He knows how. Oh, really? All right, geez, whoa. You don't have to get all defensive about it, right? I mean, you don't have to freak out. I mean, just because he's not that good at fishing dries doesn't mean you have to be ashamed of the man. I'm sure there's... A lot of things he's good at, like sweeping the garage or watching TV, shoveling, manure, clogging. Like clog dancing? Does he have any wooden shoes at home? Because that looks like a guy that could really clog, because that's like clogging is like, hey, hey. And that's sort of what he looks like when he fishes. Today we're going to be covering my eight easy to follow steps in how to become a better nymph fly fisher in a segment that I call Hank Patterson's eight easy to follow steps in how to become a better nymph fly fisher. Step one, if you want to catch fish, and you do, you got to learn to fish with nymphs and you got to learn to do it right. The first thing you do is admit to yourself that, hey, I'm not good enough to catch a fish on a dry fly. I've completely given up, I have no self-worth, and I've got no pride, so I've switched to nymphs. Step two, Pick a nymph. Any old nymph, anything will do. They're all just glorified turds. Some have bead heads, some have rubber legs, some don't, doesn't matter. That's the beauty of nymph fishing. They're all the same thing. Step three, put a bobber on your line. All right, if you want to call that a strike indicator so you can sleep at night calling yourself a fly fisherman, you go ahead. I call it a bobber because it's a bobber. Step four, what you want to do is strip a lot of line out, right? Just strip a bunch of line out, strip it out like this, right into a big old pile, right? Because in nymphing, it doesn't matter a presentation. You don't have to back cast it. You don't have to do anything like that. You don't have to even know how to fish. You just strip a bunch of line out into a big pile like that, right? And you just chuck it out there like a big old gill net. Throw it right up here, right up there. Boom, give it a good cast. Mm, end it. Mm, nice, let that go through. Hey, tell me this, your dad a good tipper? 
I mean, like when you go out to restaurants and whatever, does he leave a pretty good tip? I don't know. How could you not know that? All right, well, look, just in case, all right, just in case he's like a cheapskate or something, which he probably is, uh, do you know where he keeps his wallet? No. Great. Hey, do you know what a PIN number is? Have you ever heard him say something about a PIN number? You know what a credit card looks like? Yep. Had a kid. All right, we're halfway there. We'll go up to the car here in a bit. Your dad a high school graduate? Yeah. College? Yeah. Is he a certified fishing guide? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Right, because they're not just handing that out like they are college degrees. My dad's a doctor of psychology. Really? Oh boy, that must be real handy on fly fishing trips, right? I mean, like if we run into a depressed trout and we need somebody to talk to it about its feelings and about its anxieties, you know, we'll call on your dad for that. Wow. Psychology. Witchcraft. It's witchcraft. Stumbling around a lot. Probably learned that from your dad. Step four, mend it, mend it, mend it. Then you want to mend it. Now when you're mending, the first thing you want to do is start about six o'clock, right? You want to bring it all the way around the clock, all right? So that's a proper mend right there. A lot of guys are going to do this. They're going to get real lazy. There's nothing more annoying to a guide than a guy that's going to put in a lazy mend, all right? You get some shoulder into it. You start at six, and you end at six o'clock. That's a proper mend. And you want to mend it and mend it and then mend it, and then you follow that bobber, and then mend it, and then you follow that bobber, and then you mend it, and then you mend it, and you mend it, and then once you're done mending it, you gotta mend it again, because you're gonna mend it over, and over, and over, and over, and over again, okay? Nymphing isn't about casting, it's about mending. Step five, you gotta set that hook, all right? If that bobber moves at all, you gotta set that hook, okay? If it hits a rock, set that hook. If it hits a twig, set that hook. If it hits the bottom, set that hook. If it moves, if it twitches, if it wibbles, if it slows down, you set that hook. So you start it, you slap it down like that, you mend it, you mend it, you mend it, right? And then you get a drift going, and then you set that hook. And every time you set that hook, you got to look at your fishing partner and you got to say, oh, that felt like a fish. Oh, oh yeah, that was definitely a fish. And then if they ask you, it's like, oh, were you setting on a fish? It's like, well, I'll tell you what, that felt like a fish. Step six, once you've completely worn yourself out from mending and setting that hook, what you want to do is sort of kick back in the chair, you shove that rod right in your crotch like that, crack yourself a beer, right there, mmm, yeah. You just fall half asleep waiting for a fish to come along and hook itself. Step seven, once that fish has hooked itself, what you want to do is just reel it in. Now it shouldn't be that big a deal because it's just one of those lazy nymph eating fish. Step eight, now you want to get a picture, okay? Now make sure that that bobber and those nymphs are nowhere to be found in the picture, okay? And then you get it up like that, get a nice photograph. Then after you let that fish go, you run home, you post that picture on Facebook and you tag it, hit and dries, and there you go. That's Hank Patterson's eight steps to becoming a better nymph fisher. Cassidy, I grew up watching my dad play professional Major League Baseball, right? Played third base, had a cannon for an arm. Four gold gloves, three world titles. All right, and then one time, I'm sitting there, I'm about 27 years old, right? And I'm sitting in the stands, and I'm watching a game, and then all of a sudden it hits me. This is not professional baseball. My dad plays slow pitch community softball league. What I'm trying to tell you is, there comes a time in everybody's life where you find out your dad isn't the superhero that you thought he was. He's not this larger than life figure. He's just another schmuck, right? Just some average Joe, I mean, below average. For me, I'm sitting there and I find out, hey, my dad's not a professional ball player. He's just some guy playing softball in the park. For you, you came into this day thinking, oh man, my dad's a really good fly fisherman and you just find out, hey, he sucks. You gotta be kidding me. I mean, there's Look at this, see that? Another life lesson. Sometimes, Cassidy, it's better to be lucky than good.